Hello, good morning. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'm, my name is Mina Alnajar, and I'm here with Roger Alnajar, who is also my father, but don't worry, I'm definitely not forced to be here. I'm here on my own free will. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Roger. He's gonna give you guys a brief history about decommissioning and how it started. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Roger Alnajar. I'm the president and founder of Alpha Commissioning Engineers. Um, I have over 35 years of experience in HVAC. And uh, I'm here, as uh, Mina told you, uh, with Mina. She's my daughter, my vice president, and my boss. Even though she said uh, I didn't force her, but <laughs> she's my boss. <laughs> uh, my son will be joining us uh, next month. He'll be graduating from UIC also. and. Uh, uh, engineering College, and he'll join us. So, our presentation today about decommissioning. I'm sure that most of you maybe never heard about decommissioning, or never did any project, or worked on any decommissioning projects. What's decommissioning? Decommissioning requires that technical actions be taken to allow the removal of some or all of the regulatory controls from a facility. In doing so, buildings can be ensured that a safe and efficient demolition will take place. I call it commissioning of a demolished building. Now, most of you will ask the question, why do we have to commission a building that will be demolished completely or partially? Why? Mina will take you through that. But now let me start with a few questions to you guys. Who is a commissioning engineer here? Architects, owners, or owner representative? Um, construction manager or construction company? Anything else? Okay, do you know how old is commissioning? Commissioning is as old as humanity on this earth. From the first civilization, they needed the commissioning. And you'll be surprised how they were using the commissioning during the past centuries. But they were. And they had people involved in commissioning in different ways. But unfortunately, they didn't have any standards or guidelines until 1982 when ASHRAE started or formed the first commissioning committee. And that committee started working on the commissioning standards and guidelines, and they didn't actually create the, until, the first one until 1989. Canada, the public works started using the commissioning earlier, like in 1977, and University of Wisconsin at Madison started teaching commissioning, but I don't know how you can use or teach something without any guidelines or standards. So they were collecting information, they were talking about commissioning, but they never had a standards or guidelines for the commissioning until 1989. And then after that, they started updating, creating, and for ACG, the first commissioning guideline was started, established on 2002. But just imagine, within the last 20, 30 years, how many commissioning engineers are now in America? There are thousands of them. How many jobs are, requires commissioning? Thousands of them. And without the standards and guidelines, there will be no commissioning jobs, no commissioning projects, and no commissioning engineers either. So how, now, how old is decommissioning? Decommissioning is as old as commissioning. Also, they started earlier, but unfortunately, we don't have any guidelines or standards until this moment. So this presentation is the beginning of starting a new uh, field in, in, in our uh, country. And if the, the presentation before ours, uh, Mr. Thompson was talking about 
the commissioning and uh, existing building commissioning, retro commissioning, recommissioning, we have all that. Do you guys think that it's now time to start another one, a new one? We call it decommissioning with a sample DECX. I think it's time now. And you will be amazed how important is decommissioning. And I was talking today, yesterday actually, to uh, people from ACG to Jim, and uh, we're going to add it, add decommissioning as a chapter into our guidelines, ACG guidelines. And then also we are me I'm a member also of the commission committee of ASHRAE, and we're going to check it to them and we start also adding it to the commissioning guidelines. So in a few years from now, you're going to start seeing a lot of decommissioning projects in the market too. And why we need decommissioning? Well, uh, I'll let me take you through that and explain to you the importance of decommissioning. So like Roger said, um, decommissioning is just as old as commissioning and I would argue that it's just as important. Um, while most of you could be familiar with decommissioning, you might associate decommissioning with nuclear power plants or buildings that contain sensitive material. So you would think that those buildings would need to be decommissioned so that all their equipment can be um, safely salvaged or removed. But in fact, um, all buildings that um, will eventually dismantle or be demolished should go through a decommissioning process. Now there are um, typically two common strategies when it comes to decommissioning. The first is immediate dismantling, which is when a building plans to decommission and then immediately demolish or dismantle the building. So they will go through an entire process of removing all the material, um, salvaging what they can, and then demolishing the building. Another um, process is deferred dismantling, which can happen when a building um, decides to shut down for an extended period of time uh, or remain unoccupied for an extended period of time and um, will eventually either be recommissioned or uh, dismantled. So you will go through a um, quicker decommissioning process to allow that building to stay safe until further point where they decide that they want to um, either recommission or dismantle the project. So what we're going to go through here is um, a series of hazardous materials um, followed by um, materials that we can salvage from a project as well as de disconnecting all of the equipment and identifying all the possible risks from all the above. And then as commissioning agents, it's also our job and responsibility to inform the owner what the best strategies moving forward to doing all of these processes will be so that everything can be conducted in a safe and efficient manner. Um, typically, decommissioning works very similar to commissioning. You want to have a decommissioning plan before you go into the building. You want to analyze what different types of um, equipment are inside the building um, before you start so that when you go in, you're not surprised. Um, nuclear power plants, you might want to identify what type of hazardous materials you're going to encounter before you go in so that you have the proper personnel, the proper equipment. Um, and then you want to define all of this, all these equipment. You want to um, assess the different types of risks before going in. And then you're going to want to go in and see what is in the project, what's in the building, and then move forward from there. This is just a little fancier graph um, to take you through all the different steps. When you reach a problem, you want to go back and analyze maybe where that came from. I'm just going to quickly go over um, nine different categories of hazardous materials that we've identified. Of course, um, not every project is going to have all of these hazardous materials. Some might have a combination of the above and some might not have any. Um, but these are the nine most common types that you might find in a building. You have asbestos, which is probably the most common. Um, again, you want to be able, the most important part of any kind of decommissioning is the safety factor. So you want to make sure that when you are decommissioning a building, you have the proper um, equipment and you know uh, exactly how to remove 
And also important is how, what you do with the material after you decide to dispose of it. So that, that goes um, towards the economic value of the building. So you don't want to just remove the hazardous materials. You want to also identify where these wastes are going to be um, sent off to. Got explosives, just going to kind of run through these. Gases, flammable solids and liquids, oxidizing substances, toxic, toxic and infectious substances, radioactive material, corrosives, miscellaneous dangerous goods. And here we have um, all the different systems and areas that can be decommissioned in a building. This is pretty similar to commissioning. Um, you also want to make sure that if a building decides to be um, deferred dismantled, you want to go in and before you de disconnect any of the HVAC equipment, you want to see if it can be um, reused or, or, or resalvaged before you start disconnecting. So it's important to kind of go through and see what can be saved before you go through and just disconnect everything. Uh, if you look here, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mina, but uh, with the commissioning, you don't actually inspect everything, all these areas. With decommissioning, you should. Like the ceiling, ceiling tiles, uh, um, uh, gypsum boards, uh, windows. With the commissioning, you don't do that. You just concentrate on like the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, but you don't check the envelope of the building, the structure of the building. With decommissioning, you have to. You have to check them to find out if there is any hazardous materials and in the building that you need to take care of it before you demolish the building. And here's a, um, another list of, so you want to be able to go through and kind of do a checklist of all of the equipment that you have. And if, if some of the equipment can be um, recycled, you want to be able to identify which, which one of these equipment lined or which category. Are they going to be reused, recycled, or are they going to be um, salvaged, or are they going to be uh, demolished? And these are different kinds of materials that you might find that could be salvaged. And then you want to go ahead and um, disconnect all of the MEP equipment before you go ahead and demolish the building. And um, as Roger was saying in the beginning of the presentation, uh, there are no guidelines right now. The, um, certain uh, facilities have their own standards when it comes to decommissioning. However, um, those are not uh, nationwide standards. Um, those are just their own personal standards. So that's what we're looking to develop now, our decommissioning standards for ACG and ASHRAE. And of course, at the end of your decommissioning process, you want to um, provide your, the, your client with evidence of what you've found, um, what hazardous materials were located, how you planned to uh, dispose of those hazardous materials, and um, uh, how those issues are going to be resolved. And this is a sample uh, project that we did last year that Roger is going to go ahead and kind of go through. So as Mina mentioned, I mean, there is, um, the process of decommissioning is very similar to decommissioning. It's even more complicated because you have to involve um, many sectors that are experienced in uh, like hazardous materials inspection, asp asbestos a bit, uh, inspection, uh, uh, mold and fungus, all, all these which most of our commissioning engineers, they, uh, they are not actually uh, experienced or specialized in doing that kind of work. But in this project that we did in Atlanta, it's a school. So the first thing when you get a job, you have to find out what kind of building is that? What do you expect to see inside? If it's a school, I mean, you are not expecting to see like uh, uh, nuclear uh, stuff inside it, you know, but 
uh, you definitely you will see asbestos or mold or fungus because it's an oil. And the thing is, most of the buildings in our country are maybe 50 years, especially schools, are 50 years old or older. And those buildings, um, they need either to renovate them or demolish them. When it came to this building here, they had a study before they decided to go to the demolition. And they got so many uh, information about the renovation and the cost of the renovation and the cost of the demolition and building a new building. And then they decided, okay, if the renovation will cost them that much money, which is very close to the cost of a new building, is better just to demolish it and start or build a new one, which we all know that the new buildings will have new technology, new materials, and it will last for at least 50 years from now. So they have not too many issues with it. But then when we started, we looked at the building, the usage of the building, uh, how long it's been unoccupied, what did they have, uh, what mm, uh, uh, the structure of the building. So we started with that, and then we started with collecting. Uh, first, we uh, start with uh, preparing the decommissioning plan. And then we started, after that, we started inspecting everything. We started inspecting the exterior of the building, the interior of the building, the HVAC system, the, the electrical system, the plumbing system. Uh, even we inspected the trees outside the building, the neighborhood uh, 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 surrounding the building to make sure that when they do the demolition, it's not gonna, any part of that process is not gonna affect the neighborhood. And after we inspected everything on the building, then we uh, uh, created our decommissioning report and submitted to the owner to look at it and consider it for their uh, demolition uh, process. And to prepare for that, we First, we, we were thinking, of, okay, this is a school, so what should we expect? And we didn't expect all these kind of hazardous materials or all these kind of um, stuff that we uh, expect on some of the buildings. So we um, excluded most of this stuff from our plan. And we also hired a special company, from, a local company from Atlanta to do the asbestos uh, inspection and the mold and fungus uh, inspection too as well. And they did and they provided us with the report uh, on those two uh, hazardous materials. And uh, this is some of the findings that we found on the building, uh, like for the exterior, we found the kind of walls, exterior walls, the materials. And the thing is, uh, it's not only to inspect the building for um, the hazardous material that you might find there, but if, to inspect it to see if there, is, uh, if there are any materials inside the building that you can either reuse it or recycle it. If not, then everything will be salvaged. But we, might, we found a lot of materials inside the building and outside that can be reused for another project or recycle. And we go through this, look at this um, cabinets that we found, the ceiling tiles, uh, all the TVs uh, inside the building, uh, all the windows are still in good shape, even though that um, uh, there, of course, the flooring will be all gone and the walls, uh, the ceiling here is all, um, in a bad shape, but they can be recycled too. Uh, all the HVAC equipment, the boiler uh, was maybe 40, 50 years old. Uh, the pumps are very old and um, they can't even, I don't know if they can recycle them. Uh, the electrical um, was all uh, very old, definitely will be all uh, demolished and um, but we identified the location of all the electrical panels. So even though that you are going to disconnect the main power to the building, but you need to find out 
where all the electrical equipment are and electrical panels. So when you demolish the building, you need to make sure that nothing is, especially like uh, the light bulbs. The light bulbs will contain, they were using all the light, old light bulbs, which contains uh, gases inside, which is very harmful also to the public and to the environment. Uh, the same thing with the HVAC. Um, the, those are all natural and gas, but those are the, uh, some of the findings. But also with the HVAC system, it's all. So they were using the refrigerant R22. So you have to be very careful before you demolish the building. You need to um, completely uh, remove that refrigerant from the building before you do any demolition. Because if you release it to the air, of course, it's going to hurt our ozone and hurt our uh, environment. So they have to take that action before they do any demolition. But this is a list of some of the materials that we found like all this uh, stuff in the building. We found that there is asbestos, ACM, it means asbestos uh, containing materials. Uh, so they have to be careful when they, the first thing they have to do is they have to isolate that area and they have to remove the asbestos before they start with any demolition. And then uh, the LB means the light bulbs, so they have to remove those light bulbs, make sure they are not going to uh, break them and release all that gases inside them and uh, hurt the area around them. And then we found also batteries, which also contain some uh, liquids and uh, materials that uh, are hazardous to the uh, public. And then we found some other stuff that is uh, uh, harmful to, uh, uh, to the employees that they are going to do the demolition and to the environment or to the uh, surrounding areas. And, uh, and then we identified, after we get all this information, we started identifying the risk of doing the demolition, so they have to be careful when they do it. Uh, the risk number one was the public safety, so the physical limits of the demolition has to be identified. So we have to tell them exactly what the limits that they have to uh, put a fence around it and put a sign that there is uh, there will be a demolition in that area and they have to be careful with so no people will be entering that area during the demolition and um, put all that signs we put all we found all these and uh, 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 put all these recommendations for the owner to use while the, we are identifying those risks. So prior to any demolition, the school should be cleared from any personnel and disconnect all the electrical, gas, water lines before starting any demolition process. And then risk number two was the erosion control, which is to protect all the surrounding residential uh, sewage uh, or drainage uh, system from anything that's moving toward that area and hurting the surrounding areas and the drainage from the site into the surrounding creeks in the area required a surge prior to demolition. So that will require some also uh, uh, special companies or uh, people that specialize in that field to go there and uh, check all the surrounding areas, make sure that nothing will be uh, moving from that building to the surrounding areas. And then we started, of course, when we wrote our uh, report, we put all the recommendations. So we, there is a big list of recommendations to the owner to go with, and uh, uh, they have to use them. If they don't and they got uh, problem, problems with the demolition, then they'll be liable for that problem. But if they consider it and they take it into consideration, then they'll be in the safe side. So this is um, almost everything that I wanted to say here, but the most important is decommissioning is very important for the safety of the people um, and the environment and uh, the neighborhood. And we will expect a lot of those demolition projects in the near future, and it's time 
to, you know, to take an action to use the decommissioning process to identify all the risks for any building. At this time, there are just very specific sectors that were using the decommissioning, like the nuclear power plants. If they have to demolish that building, they're doing it. And the Army or Navy, well, they want to demolish any of the like ships, warships, or they are using it. But for the public, not too many. In Atlanta now, they are uh, almost using it for every school or for every public project that they want to demolish. Uh, but we have to start the standards and the guidelines so we can take it further with every, all the states, with everyone to use the decommissioning process before they do any demolition. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please. Thank you, Roger and Mina. Thank you. Um, yeah, quick question. Uh, so generally in commissioning, the commissioning authority is sort of over the whole process, overseeing the engineers doing the design, the construction groups doing the construction and on into maintenance. This, um, the process here where you're actually analyzing the safety of the systems and that seems a little bit more specialized than the general process of commissioning. It seems uh, that you have to be a specialist in you know, phosphorus and, and fluorescent tubes and everything else, uh, safety oriented. Is, is the decommissioning that? Is it the kind of the design of the project, the analysis, or is it the overseeing of the, the design, the, the uh, asbestos remediation, and overseeing all of those events start to finish? Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's part of the design, yeah, because if the design requires demolish uh, the whole building or part of the building and then rebuild another building, then, yeah, it has, there should be uh, part of the specs uh, to include the decommissioning on it before they do any demolition. At this time, they don't. They don't have that specs because there are no guidelines or standards. Uh, the commissioning agent, even though it's a little bit different from commissioning, the process is almost the same. It's just the, uh, the requirements is different a little bit. And, uh, but it's still the commissioning agent should be able to do that. So if you have a project uh, and the commissioning agents are starting from the beginning, from the design process, then they should include that decommissioning when they do that, even if it's a part of the building, which we always see that, like they have a big building, but they want to renovate part of it, but that renovation will include the demolition of part of it. And that demolition has to be decommissioned before they do it. And we know that all these buildings that they want to renovate it, they are old. And they were using lead in the pan, they were using asbestos, they were using and also if they had some uh, water condensation, leaks, some other stuff, definitely you'll find mold, fungus, some other stuff inside the buildings. Plus, I mean, if these buildings are used for some special use, like uh, pharmacies or pharmaceutical buildings that were, they were using some chemical uh, equipment, uh, materials, then we have to identify it before they do that and isolate the building before they do the demolition. I thought of a second question while you were uh, talking about partial building demolition. At what point do you draw the line where this needs to be done? I mean, if I'm just going to remove, let's say, the ducts of an HVAC system and replace them with different ducts and terminal units, is that going to tri trigger the necessity for decommissioning? Or? It will. It, definitely it will. So they have to consider even though they are just removing part of the ductwork there, but it's connected to the existing building, so they have to be careful because who knows what's inside the deck. So one of the recommendations should be you have to clean the whole deck system, even though it's not part of the demolished building or innovated building or site of the building, you still have to look into that and make sure nothing not, uh, not, nothing of the uh, hazardous materials are going inside or they were inside the deck work that needs to be cleaned and removed before they finish the new building or the new 
renovation building and uh, turned over to the owner. You had a question? The same question? Okay. And, and if we're looking at it from a business perspective, the standards I'd be really interested in viewing uh, because I believe in there there's going to be details written for a prime contractor to incorporate our type of work here for the decommissioning. I would wonder if there would be uh, requirements for an industrial hygienist to be on staff or if that's something that the decommissioning company is just overseeing, identifying areas that would require the sampling, the additional work, the third party firms that you would hire to do certain work. And then the liabilities, where, where does that evolve to? Does it incorporate? Well, that's, a, that's really yeah. a good question. I mean, because there are so many wide range of services associated with decommissioning, then yeah, you have to teach the commissioning agents all these different aspects that is not included now. And as soon as they, you know, add that decommissioning chapter to their commissioning standards, yeah, they have to identify all these things and they have to teach all these commissioning engineers how to do that. Now, I mean, every single part, they have, they have special companies doing it. Like as best as they have, you can do it now. You can do that inspection. Yeah, they have special companies, they, they, they do that. But it's time maybe for the commissioning engineers to do that, to learn how to do that and to, and otherwise, I mean, if they don't want to do it, you still can hire just like we did on this project. We d don't know how to do it, so, or we don't have the equipment and the liability to do that too. So we hired the company to do that for us. And they provided us with their report information on, uh, on the findings. And we included in our report. So it's, it's, it's more complicated, but as soon as we have the guidelines and standards, it will be more identified. And just like commissioning, when they started, was nothing there. Nobody knows how to do it. And the, one that, the ones that were doing it, that were, they were des the design engineers. But now we have certified professionals who's doing that. And the thing is, in, in a few years from now, uh, you'll see something like the, what USGPC now have in their uh, projects that they are certifying, they are forcing the commissioning. So when we have the guidelines and standards, then they will also force to do the decommissioning as part of it, of their projects that they are certifying uh, to do it. So it just takes time, but then it will open, uh, you know, all the doors to everyone, you know, to get more work. But the most important is just to make sure that our environment is clean and safe. And that the, that's the whole purpose of it. Since now, from, for the thousands of years, they were demolishing the buildings without even considering any of that. So just imagine how many people got hurt from doing that, but they were not talking about it. Uh, question? Um, so in, in most of the uh, projects that involve demolition of an existing building that we've been involved with, uh, there's an environmental consultant, and they do a complete sampling of the building materials. They'll, check the paint on the walls, they'll check the mastic in the floors, the insulation on the ductwork, and they'll do a complete survey uh, throughout the building. Now, um, can you comment on that? Does the, does the decommissioning um, process by the decommissioning engineer firm uh, involve a complete environmental sampling of all building materials? Well, that's a good question because, yeah, there are people doing it now but not doing it under the decommissioning process. They are doing it under environmental uh, or different name, but they are doing it because uh, there are no decommissioning standards and guidelines. So they were doing it based on the environmental uh, control 
the safety of our environment. So they were specialized in doing that, but they were doing it from different aspects. So does that but create any duplication of work? In, 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 so no, I, I assume that, be, um, that the decommissioning firm also does environmental sampling. You, know, you can't look no, at paint on these, the wall and tell whether it has lead, or you can't look at mastic and say that has asbestos. I mean, so, some people can tell, but... Right. Um, it's not going to be duplicated because these guys, these uh, companies, has to be certified decommissioning agents to do that kind of work, too. And at the same time, you as a commissioning agent, you will be also certified as a decommissioning agent to do that kind of work. At this time, they are hiring separate companies. But why you don't do it? But even these companies, they don't have that kind of standards and guidelines to do it correctly. OK, thank you. Sure. And that's why we need those standards and guidelines. So we can, when we do any demolition project, we, we have to make sure that it's been done correctly based on a strong standards and guidelines in the market. And I, as I said in the beginning, demolition, decommissioning is as old as commissioning. It's been too old. People were using it just like in 80s or 70s, they were using commissioning, but without any standards or guidelines. So just imagine how well it was it before you get certified and doing it in, based on some guidelines and standards in the market. That's why we need now to move toward that uh, side to get those standards and guidelines uh, issued and established so we can have the right people to do it. Commissioning was done by design engineers. And they were not doing it, to be honest with you, they were not doing it correctly. They were just inspecting a little, a few things, but there were, because there were no guidelines, they were not actually submitting any reports at that time, and they were not doing it correctly until we get those standards and guidelines and uh, certifying people to do that kind of work. So this is the same thing. It's just, it's, because it's a beginning, it's very hard for a lot of people to understand it. As soon as we have those standards and guidelines and we force it to use it in the market, then people, they start, and then we'll have more professionals get involved doing it, and then we'll update and update and, you know, and find the correct guidelines to do that job, that kind of job. Any more questions? I know it's the last day and last presentation. And, uh, you guys want to leave, but... <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, so would you say it's possible that instead of hiring an environmental consultant uh, prior to de development of the um, demolition plans to go with a uh, decommissioning company instead of an environmental consultant? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the commissioning, they don't have to hire too many people. So if they are hiring the commissioning agent, the commissioning agent is certified as a decommissioning agent too because it's a part of the, the commissioning, they can do that too. So, so basically, you can replace the uh, environmental uh, assessment company? That Not replacing, but they will be also certified as a decommissioning agents too. So they can do that part too. Uh, OK, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, open to everyone. We don't want to eliminate those people. We just want them to be certified and using the guidelines and standards, the correct ones, to do it correctly. Um, just a quick, I don't know if it's really a question or more of a kind of a consideration. Um, what you presented today sounds like it's mostly dealing with the uh, eventual uh, demolition of a structure or a building. 
um, kind of one of the aspects that I've seen out there is um, a pre-demolition. Let's say uh, you're building a new building that's going to be attached to an existing structure and you have to d partially demolish the, the structure or, or move uh, departments or clientele out of certain areas. Uh, there's a process that needs to take place to decide you know, what's going to happen with the existing systems that serve those spaces uh, and, and what to do to prevent people from trying to reoccupy spaces that need to be maintained empty, like in a hospital where they like to use spaces, they'll sneak in there. So there has to be a plan to um, limit the amount of air, make it uncomfortable for people so it's not so inviting, yet still meet uh, environmental codes and, and safety codes. Uh, and this is kind of just more of a statement for consideration as part of a de pre-demolition process. Yeah, I agree with you. And the thing is, the decommissioning is not only related to the environmental only. It's, there are so many things that you need to inspect in the building and make a report to the owner about it. So that's, uh, that's why we need the decommissioning agents, because we don't want just to send somebody to check for the asbestos or lead in the paint or something like that. No, we need to inspect the whole building and make sure it's ready for the demolition and give all the recommendations to, me, to the owner to, do, to make the process of the demolition uh, easy and nice and, and accurate. Yeah, I don't see the decommissioning is only meant for demolition of a structure of a building. You have a couple items there that some things that need to be removed. And I see that if I want to get a remove or replace an old chiller, there is a process to, de to demo that chiller, starting with the electrical pieces all the way to the piping, to the refrigerant, and then remove the chiller and bring a new one. So that decommissioning is also applies to a replacement of a piece of equipment rather than demoing the whole building. Well, so environmentally, I need to capture all that refrigerant and recycle it or do something with it and then start with electrical pieces and all the duct over and the piping. So this decommissioning plan or guidelines is also going to apply to a replacement of an equipment what need to happen to that equipment before you remove it from the site? Or it's meant for demoing a building? Okay. Um, well, that's a good question. First of all, uh, Jalal is my friend. Uh, I know him uh, when we were in the college, at the same college, and I didn't see him for 37 years. I met him here at this uh, meeting. Um, we all know that demolition is removing the building. So nothing is staying there. I mean, if it's whether it's a part of it or the whole building, the, when, when we talk about demolition, that means removing everything in that building away. So there is, if, if you are going to use, uh, if you are doing only part of that building, then a replacement, yes, is an option. Uh, and definitely because that, those equipment that they have there are very old, they have to be removed, and then you have to recommend to replace them with a new ones that uh, are within their uh, standards and regulations. But if you are removing the whole building, then everything will be done, will be removed from the building. And uh, the new building, there will be a design engineer designing the new building. So that will be a completely different aspect. So you don't actually recommend replacing it. You just, you just inspect it for uh, when, when they remove it, you have to tell them how to remove it, why to remove what things has to be done correctly to remove it in a, in a safely way so, so they don't you know, hurt the environment or people working there or surrounding that area. So the major part of the commissioning is just to make sure that the process of demolition uh, is done 
correctly. So when you inspect the building and when you look for everything inside and, uh, inside and outside the building, you have to write a report and give recommendations on how to do that process correctly so nobody will get hurt from doing it. And then it's up to the owner whether he wants to replace it with another building or to just, you know, sell it, sell the land or do whatever they want to do. That's not our job as a decommissioning agents to tell the owner what needs to do after that. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we hope that you have a nice trip back to your home, and hope to see you again next year.